Hello everyone, welcome back and today we have another inbox review. We have here Academy's old M12 155mm gun motor carriage. This is basically a self-propelled gun and yeah, it's one of Academy's old kits. So as always, we'll be taking a look at the contents and seeing basically what's going on inside the kit so without further ado let's get started so first here we have the lower hull piece and the upper hull piece and also the tracks and fortunately the tracks are still good let's try to focus in there back side pretty decent detail just something to clean up right here and then the front side, all done. Front side has fairly good details as well, as you can see. So that's for the tracks. For the lower hull piece, um, it's basically the one piece stub. And if you're not familiar, this is basically an uh, M4 Sherman's uh, lower hull has the same characteristics, but of course the upper hull piece would be different. Upper hull is this. As you can see, they already have the transmission housing uh, bolts molded in. Some nice detail on the sides, you can see the bolts and whatnot. Also on the top, so this basically goes around here, if I'm not mistaken, and then the transmission housing, yeah, it's around here, yeah. So it would look like this, and then this whole uh, back portion would be your uh, fighting compartment. So yeah, that's it for the upper, lower hull, and also the tracks. Okay, next we have the suspension, two sprues here, and as you can see, most of the road wheels, well, this is, um, again, two options. You have the spoked road wheel, known with the holes right there, and you also have the pressed iron road wheel. And from the looks of it, you could, uh, especially for the spoke, uh, the pressed steel one, you have the option to, or the assembly is similar to what, <clears throat> excuse me, to what Dragon did, you have to add the back piece of the road wheel. Same goes for the idler, you have the spoked and the pressed steel one, and also the uh, drive sprockets, you have this one, and also the spoked. So this is pretty diverse, and again, like I mentioned in my previous videos, use reference photos so here we have the vbss a fairly good detail over here you have the um serial numbers although they seem to be molded um, quite big I'm not sure if that's natural but from what i saw with the dragons vbss <clears throat> they're fairly small and they shouldn't be that blown out of a portion but anyway this is um <clears throat> excuse me this academy is old kit so i just like to adjust the elephant in the room kind of feeling under the weather right now so i do have my allergies going on so forgive my voice for sounding kind of raspy anyhow um second sprue Pretty much the same. You have here the springs or the molded on springs already. And yeah, that's basically it for this sprue. Nothing much going on. Okay, here are the interesting parts. First off, we have um, white and black string, which I would be showing you the function of later on. Next, we have the pieces for the fighting compartment, especially the 155mm gun assembly. 
So you have the gun base and also the mounting points, the elevation and the sighting parts as well as the gun itself. So this is in two piece as as you all know. Uh, you have to um, assemble this and then clean up that gap or that seam in the middle. Then you have the bolting for the transmission housing. This is the three-piece transmission housing. Hence these um, curvatures right here. And then other parts, mounting bracket. So here, here's the transmission housing cover. As you can see, it's the three-piece bolted one. Nicely detailed right here. You can see yet again. Let's focus in. You can see here the serial numbers are molded in, some fine texture. So yeah, that's um, basically it. Some of the other parts here would be for the mounting, um, mud flap guards, and yeah, the mounting for the additional shells that come with the kit. Next, we have here hatches, um, fuel caps, handles, some pioneer tools, mounting brackets for the MG, MG ammo boxes, a storage box, pioneer tools, then backpacks. And here we have um, two options right here. You have the M250 cal machine gun, and you also have the 30 cal machine gun and by the looks of it this uh, m12 did not really have any mgs mounted or at least on the instructions they don't really show you how to mount this on the tank so i think it's better off that you left them and save them for another project which i would be doing especially with the 30 cal since the m4 sherman i'm sorry since the M4 Sherman that I did, the Dragon M4 Sherman, when I modified it to replicate one that served here in the Philippines, I added um, one of the features I saw was that the tank commander did not use the M250 cal machine gun. Instead, they used the 30 cal machine gun. So I'd probably take this and also it's... Um, Whatever mounting point it uses, I'm not sure if it's this thinner one or the wider one, but I think it would be the thinner one. I'm gonna take this and the mounting point and put it on that Sherman. Alright, so that's it for this sprue. Okay, here are the two biggest sprues in the kit. So, let's start off with this. Here you have a lot of flat parts and most of them would be going into the fighting compartment and on the rear. On the fighting and the driver, driver's compartment. This kit has an engine included, which I'd show, be showing you in the instructions. So you can build this with an engine in the front, or like engine and transmission in the front, then the driver's compartment, and then the fighting compartment. As you can see, this would be the floor for the fight compartment these holes right here are where the shells are stored upright and you may have already guessed these are the shells included so once you get everything done this would be a pretty good addition to it as it would make the tank or the spg look very busy so the, the other parts here would probably be for the driver's compartment as well as the engine. But most of these would be going in and around the fighting compartment and complementing details. This one, um, more of the detailing. If I'm not mistaken, these would be the fire extinguishers. Gun travel lock right here. Headlight guards and the other mechanisms for the gun, the driver's compartment, and the engine. Storage, bo most likely storage boxes here. And then this would be the um, plow that 
this would be the plow that goes to the rear of the tank so they deploy that just so that when it fires um, this would cushion mo most of the recoil and instead of the tank uh, really moving or flipping over well I don't think the recoil is enough to flip it over but um, to really throw it off its um, balance and sighting this would be deployed just to cushion it so here are the air filters and yeah uh, most of the parts here would just be complementing the fighting compartment engine and also driver's compartment not a lot of exterior detail because most of it is in the fighting compartment all right so we'll be moving on to the instruction manual and the decals all right so the decals here let's take this out of the plastic so the decals here are fairly uh, simple most of them are the allied stars and markings and then some of the warning um, markings let's see over there not really warning markings but they look more like um, labels and as you can see right there the other ones are the serial numbers of the tank and also the names so we have here Corregidor, Adolf's Assassin, Alberta 4, and these markings right here. And um, this French name, which I might um, butcher, so forgive me for that. Avanchard de Mort. I don't know how to say this part, but yeah, this is uh, French. And then Jane Hill. So yeah, um, I do remember reading a good dis discussion page which details which names or which uh, markings are accurate for the kit. So you might want to look for that. I'll try to see if I could find it and leave it down in the description below. So that's it for the decals. Next we have Academy's manual sheets. There are three of them. One of which, let's go here first, would be for the painting and decal placement. So this is basically for um, you know, the different uh, markings you could do with this M12. Olive drab, body color, and then interior, I think most likely the same. We'll have to check that out again. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, again, you would probably have to look at a better source material for the markings, just so you can be accurate with what you're placing. Then next we have here this small pamphlet. I think this would be a correction page. Yeah, it looks like a correction page or something. And as you can see here, this is how you detail the uh, drive. The engine compartment, as you can see there, they have the engine right there, and then the firewall, and then this would be the driver's compartment, and then another piece right here, then this would be the fighting compartment, and the back panel, then as you can see right there, you have here the detailing, and you can see thread. So what thread are we talking about here? If I'm not mistaken, this would be the black thread. Um, they want you to place it through those um, uh, winch devices. And that would go throughout all this length, including the ones on the plow. So yeah. Um, it's gonna be detailed like this. You have to really pu push it through and through just to get that additional detail of it being deployed. And then you have here the gun, the complete gun assembly, which you just place right here. And if you do it correctly, I do believe this can be 
left in a movable position then the front um if you're wondering i got this kit and it was really old already hence the dirty markings here but it still survived as you can see they added um, some details regarding the m12 in english and in what i only presume to be either yeah uh, i think this is japanese and then korean So opening it up, you can see here um, details for the suspension. As you can see, they labeled out um, the options you'd be doing or how you'd be doing them. Actually, the assembly right here does seem to be uh, fairly similar to what Dragon did with their suspension. You do the road wheels first and then um, attach the two arms after which the bogey housing the spring and also this roller then after that this uh, this thing above yeah fairly similar and then we have here the detailing for the engine as you can see and also the driver's compartment fairly good next we have here detailing for the underside of the upper hull and also the fuel caps the hatches and then the transmission housing and all other exterior details such as headlights and other parts Next, we have more detailing, some pioneer tools, storage boxes, the gun travel lock. And then we have, yeah, the thread. Oh, this, the white thread would be for the uh, cable, the towing cable. Then as you can see that there's the winch, which I think... Think they want you to be done movable then here's the plow and other details so yeah moving forward we have more detailing for the fighting compartment and as you can see they added the shells in and also other parts gun assembly which is fairly unique if i should say so myself they really completed the look just so that it's not super simplified and still gives you that authentic look so more details in the fighting compartment and how to thread the thread <laughs> and the back you can see that they did detail out the spruce and if you would notice there are fairly few number of spruce part count is at the minimal as well and yeah that's it for this review what do i think about it well it looks pretty yeah, it looks pretty decent and uh, simple build and from what I read from other threads, it came along pretty nicely. I guess some minor corrections you have to do here and there, filling out some seams and gaps. But overall, um, it's pretty much a simple build. But yeah, as usual, after I build the kit, I would be doing a finished product review. And of course, I would be correcting myself if ever there were some um developments along the way in building the kit so yeah uh that's it for this episode thank you so much guys i hope you enjoyed this one if you did leave a thumbs up but if you didn't leave a thumbs down 
Let me know down in the comments below what you think, if you have this kit or you're planning to do it, or in general, just any feedback that you wish to give. So as always, stay safe and keep on modeling. Until next time, goodbye.